HIV and AIDS don't dominate the headlines like they did a decade ago, and in some ways we've become immune to the tragic stories. But around the world, researchers and scientists are still hard at work looking for a vaccine or a cure that could finally put an end to the epidemic and perhaps bring these conversations back to our dinner tables. Here's Devi Sankari Governor with something a little different. For 41-year-old Joe Berger, Polo Kolo Ramatwala, having a good time means cooking, feeding people, and good conversation across the dinner table. By the cooking thing, by the way. Polo was a 21-year-old student when he was diagnosed with HIV. It's been a long journey grappling with the fear and stigma of it, but he learned not only to live, but to thrive, reinventing himself several times over first as an AIDS activist, then life coach, and now chef. Is there anything you don't do? Because you cook, you <laughs> books, activists. I don't do the dishes. That's yeah, what I don't do. do. <laughs> As I'm known to be the curry queen, I'm joining Polo to prepare a special curry for some of the hottest brains in healthcare to discuss what science has in store for the 8 million South Africans who, like Polo, are living with HIV. So for me, I think what's great is to be in a fantastic environment, yeah. eating your good food. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. And, to yeah. and talking HIV. Yeah. I mean, 20 years, we would never yeah. have done it like this. No, and, and that's the whole point. People are living with HIV should be living life beyond HIV. I say HIV is a secondary factor in my life. So Polo, what's the plan? What are we cooking? We're going to do a starter. Mm -hmm. with prawns. I'm going to make lamb curry with basmati. If you have a bit of time, then I'll do like a pan-fried spinach. Then. Yum, yum. Yes. Let's yes. go. Outside of the kitchen, Polo mentors young professionals. Even if amazing progress in HIV drugs has made it just another chronic illness, stigma remains real. So I work mostly with professionals, the lawyers and the people who don't want to go to Bara Hospital uh, for service. But remember, we... do you find that? Do you find the more professional you are, the less open you want to be yes. about your status. Yes, levels. So I had someone who said to me, I'm too educated, how did I get infected? Most of these guys, they don't disclose their status. You know, only their doctor and then you'll be only the third person who knows about my status. That's the like common line. So uh, these guys, chicken. I think, are done. Yes. They're happy? They are ready. The chicken, I'm just going to let it simmer a little bit more. <laughs> Polo's invited his oldest friend, Professor Francois Fenter, once an activist doctor fighting for basic treatment, now leading investigations into groundbreaking studies for a cure. Polo's always wanted to meet Dr. Catherine Ngadi to get the lowdown on how far vaccines are in preventing HIV. Angela Matsusi, a nurse, HIV positive, is a motivational speaker. And Dr. Muketsi Mate works in private practice. Dying to taste because I've been the sous chef. <laughs> as I dig into my beetroot, mm -hmm. I mean, the most obvious question for me right now is what was it like for you guys as doctors, as activists, during that time when we were in complete denial as a country? There were long waiting lists before you could get onto ART. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of hurdles, and you know, as a result, people died. When you're living with HIV and you keep going to bury people, you yeah. keep thinking, yeah. okay, yeah. at some point, because I'm going to end up with Yes, be, it's a reminder. And um, it was quite hectic. Yeah. And back then, I mean, there, there, wasn't an, there actually wasn't an incentive to test. Because what's the point of testing? If you find out you're positive, the health system has got nothing to mm. offer you. Because that's the other Since then, the scientific breakthroughs have been incredible. Earlier this year, hopes were raised when the second HIV-positive man, known as the London patient, was cured. It came a decade after the so-called Berlin patient had similar results. So no wonder people are going to get excited and think, well, it should be just around the corner, but is it? I think it's a very complicated problem. Mm -hmm. So these patients had cancers, leukemias, lymphomas, and they did what we call a, a stem cell transplant, which fundamentally changed the genetic makeup, which meant the way they dealt with the virus was different. It was a way of killing the leukemia or the lymphoma, and it was a way of killing the virus at the same time as a happy bystander. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the primary reason to actually give them the stem cell transplant. Mm -hmm. Stem cell transplants are very, very toxic. And mm -hmm. while we've got better at them, it still way outstrips the toxicity of antiretroviral therapy. When you heard about the cure, mm. I mean, how, what was your initial reaction? So I kind of didn't get excited. And I remember posting on my social media page that 
do not get excited. And it's psychological. Mm. You know, people take their meds, they are tearing, they are fine. But when is the cure coming? <laughs> I think even I would love to have a cure. Mm. You know, the life expectancy of an HIV positive person is much longer than what it used to be. Mm. So if it comes, yay, we're going to be happy. But for now, I'm quite happy with the treatment. And who knows, you know... Then there was hope of a vaccine, which Catherine has spent the last 16 years working on. There are three trials running in South Africa at the moment, and she co-chairs the trial on HIV-negative Southern African women, which seems to be showing hope for protection against a variety of global HIV strains. How far off are we from vaccines? Well, 2022, we'll have our first answers about three current studies that are in the field. We're actually planning for a partial efficacy, so you can prevent anywhere between 5 to 15 million infections mm. in a 15-year period. So we're very hopeful. I mean, myself, I am super excited because... The early studies in humans have shown that it's actually, it does teach the immune system. Mm. The drawback is that we don't know how much of an immune response we need to prevent infection. Mm. This is the strongest result to date and the closest we have ever been out of the 80 trials run in the past 20 years. From a geek perspective, it's some of the most amazing science. It's, it's amazing. teaching us so much stuff about the vaccine field in general, not just HIV. And it's happening here. It's incredible. The, some of the best scientists in the world are housed in South mm -hmm. Africa. So I'll call you 2025. Call me. <laughs> call me. <laughs> Spirits at the table are up. There's been a 44% reduction in new infections in just five years. The test and treat program appears to be working. You have a much higher risk than if you're on the farm. It's been a good year for Francois. Apart from the release of a new treatment, TDL, which lowers the viral load quickly, is safer and cheaper, his collaborative research into killing the virus while it lies dormant in inaccessible reservoirs in the body is what really excites him. The virus is very smart. It hides out in deep, dark parts of your body, even though we can clear out the blood from the active replicating virus. And it just sits there dormant. So we were talking about is shocking them into mm. unveiling themselves and declaring that that particular cell is HIV positive so your immune system can come and clear it. It's been a huge challenge. You know, we've got drugs that probably can unlock 99.9% .9 of the drugs, but you just need that 0.1% mm. still to be positive and they'll still come back. We're still being outsmarted by this virus. And that's the mm. problem. I mean, we, we come up with an idea, you come up with a new weapon and it builds a new defense system. Just extracting the samples has been a massive achievement. And despite not having the silver bullet yet, it holds great promise for letting us know if a cure is feasible. So what's for dessert? Milk tart and mm. strawberries, simple. How do you see your futures? What I would like to see happening is Getting to a place where we have actually normalized HIV, we can treat it as like any other normal chronic illness, mm -hmm. where we can have normal conversations around it. The best thing is to live your life beyond HIV and do other things with your life, you know. There's eight million of us, you know, mm -hmm. and you can't ignore that. As the night wound down, I was struck by how excited and committed they remain to one of the biggest health burdens and science mysteries of our time.